Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, 46 through 48. To the left is the King James Version, to the right is the Expanded Bible. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. So what is a publican? A publican, back then, they were corrupt tax collectors. So when the Bible speaks about publicans, they are usually referring to sinners. So what is this whole thing is saying? Let's say that someone loves me. Someone is treating me rightly. So they are loving me and treating me rightly. It is going to be very easy for me to love that person. Why? Because they are treating me rightly. So why would it be difficult? So what reward is there if that person is loving me and doing all of these good things for me? There is no effort for me to love that person. But let's say that a person slanders my name. They backstab me. They curse me out. They break my windows, slash my tires, so on and so on. It is going to be quite difficult to forgive that person, to love that person. So when I do forgive and love that person, there is reward in that. If something is easy to do, what reward is there? But if something is difficult to do, there is reward in that. Look. If you can get to the point where, hey, this person has done so many bad things to me, but hey, if my enemy is hungry, I am going to feed him or her. If my enemy needs clothes or anything else, I am going to be there for them. When you can get to that point, God is going to bless you for that. I know that in many churches, they say, if you want to get blessed by God, what you have to do is sow a seed, sow a seed, sow a seed, sow a seed. So pretty much put money into the church. Think about this. In the Bible, it is telling you that when you disobey God, he is going to curse you. But your pastor or preacher is saying, if you sow a seed, put money into a church, God is going to bless you. How is he going to bless you when you are being cursed by God for disobeying him? You have all of these curses coming toward you because you are not doing right by God, but someone is telling you to place money in church and God is just going to knock out all of those curses and say, hey, this person just sowed a seed, so hey, <laughs> no more curses. You can still have sex before marriage. You can still curse and do all of those wicked things. And I am going to bless you because you are giving this pastor money. How crazy does that sound? Think about that. How crazy does that sound? That sounds insane. I can pay someone to knock out my sins. That sounds like some pagan mess right there, man. Let's go to 47. 
My lord. <laughs> and if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so. So here we go with publicans again. So sinners. This is saying, if you only greet people that you like, or people that you are close to, or people that you are close to in your family, what more are you doing than everyone else that are in sin? When you live for God, there have to be a difference. People should be able to clearly see a difference. Myself, I don't have to go down the street and scream to people, I am a Christian. I don't have to say that because they can see it. They can see it by the way I live my life. They can see it by the way I act. So I don't have to scream to the top of my lungs, ah, and tell people that I serve God because they can see it. There have to be a difference. The way you act, the way you speak, what you involve yourself with, there have to be a difference between servants of God and sinners. Make sense? Okay. 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. No one is perfect, Kevin. No one is. This is why I am sinning, and God is going to accept me into heaven because he knows my heart. <laughs> Jesus is saying, be ye perfect. So obviously your definition of perfection is flawed. It is wrong. What is the earthly definition of perfection? Perhaps you do everything right. You never do anything wrong. You are good at everything blah 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 earthly definition of perfection jesus is not speaking about that what is jesus definition of perfection repenting of your sins following god's rules and regulations when you do that you are then made perfect so stop saying, no one is perfect. God knows my heart, so I am going to heaven after I die. Even though I still have sex before marriage, I am having sex with someone's spouse. I am stealing, I am cursing, I am fighting. I am doing all of these evil things, but God knows my heart because I love God. Yes, I don't serve God but I love God and he knows my heart. <laughs> Do you see how crazy? <laughs> Do you see how crazy that is? So many people are saying that. God knows my heart. Yes, he does. He knows that you have a wicked heart. <laughs> God knows my heart. Ah, my Lord. I want to say this too, and this is off topic too. But let me wipe my eyes. Okay. We have family members that are in sin, right? Yes. And we want them to come to God, right? Yes. 
every time when you see them, stop preaching to them every single time. <laughs> repent of your sins. Repent of your sins. Serve God. Serve God. Serve God. Do right. Do right. Do right. They already know that. What is going to bring them to God sooner? Or what is going to help? You have to show them love. Do you believe I go out and the people that I meet that are in sin, do you believe I go there, hey, you filthy sinner, <laughs> you bad sinner, you. You need to change your ways and serve God, so on and so on. Not always. I don't preach to a person every time I see the person. I show them love. Sometimes I go over people's houses or homes and, you know, I bring over food or I offer my help. So on and so on. I am allowing God to use me so he can show his love through me to them. This is what you should want to do. If you are constantly preaching to a person, every time when you see them, that is going to annoy them. My Lord, what you should do is aim for love. Of course, every so often you can preach to them when there is an open door but aim for love. Some people are only going to talk to you to tell you when something is wrong. Hey, you know, you broke that lamp there or, you know, you really should change this and change that. Don't be that way, man. Don't be that way. Come to people and say positive things to them. Why would a person want to speak to you if you are only saying negative things to them? They already know that they are in sin. They already know that they are doing bad. Why continue to come to them and say the same things over and over and over and over again? Why? The best thing to do is show them love. Sometimes it takes, or most times, it takes love to heal a person. A person have been screamed at already. A person have heard bad words about themselves. So why continue to do it? Show them love. Hey, yes, you backstabbed me. You stole my things and stuff. Hey, but I am still going to love you. I am still going to be here for you. I love you. I care for you. Call me when you need help and I am going to try to do something for you. You can depend on me. When you are that way, that is going to change people. Yes, probably afterward, they are still going to be the same way, but if you show them unconditional love, unconditional love, that is going to change a person. Stuff like this, we are not really taught this. So don't, my Lord, I pray that this makes sense. Connect with people with love. God is going to curse you. God is going to curse you. <laughs> you are going to hell if you don't change. There is a time and place for that. Not all the time. People need love. They need a person to speak to. 
I am not saying that I speak to everyone that wants to speak to me, but people need someone to speak to. Show them love. Make sense? I pray that it does. God bless.